So it is 7 p.m. I believe we can call the meeting to order. We have a quorum of um, commissioners here. Um, we will start with citizen comments. I just have a comment, and I know you're working on it, but your new tab is really difficult to maneuver, I find, and I'm not really stupid but yeah I'm finding it very difficult to 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 maneuver so that's just my comment could, I just respond? could you um, could we either talk or could you just jot down like the three things that you find confusing because it's easy to change okay sure and if you think it's idiosyncratic to you, then maybe we'll gather a group. If, if not, then we'll just do, you know, we can make a change if you suggest. Which you could well do. Yeah. I mean. That's probably not. Thanks. That's a good, good point. Anyone else? Any other citizen comments? Seeing none, we move on to the approval of the minutes from April 4th. Has any, everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the April 4th meeting? Anyone see any issues? Did I, did I miss it? But I thought the date was wrong at the top of it. Oh, my been. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I noticed that one was looking at. So with a change to the date, shall anyone make a motion to Approved. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. And we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All in favor, unanimous. Great. Done. Um, and now the minutes from April 16th. Has everyone had a chance to review? Is everyone in agreement? Or rather, do we have any issues, any corrections, any comments? Second. How do we vote? All in favor say aye. 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 And motion passed. <coughs> Approved minutes. Okay, so um, next up is a grant discussion. Um, I don't think there are any current grant discussions. I just put it in there so that it's kind of a placeholder. However, I will say that I put in the coordinated notes that um, Park Run will be holding their inaugural run on June 1st at the National Park for National Trails Day. So, you know, take a look. They're going to be, they have a Facebook page up already, and you can follow what they're doing. So just, you know, EDC money at work. That's awesome. Can I add a comment? I think that you also mentioned in the coordinator's report that the only outstanding grant is LifeScape. Right. And I've had some communication with Woody, um, and he is asking us, I guess informally, or I mean, I'm sure he would make it formal. Uh, um, just to remind everybody, we agreed that we would establish an advisory committee. Michael and I said we would do it. We've talked about the construct of it. Woody is fine with the basic idea and, and the way we describe the committee. He's asking if would we indicate that we are prepared to give him the grant if the design that he comes back with for the program meets with our approval? As he's willing to give us the, the, the ability to say no if we don't like it, but if we like it, he'd let, he wants to know whether we will commit to giving him the grant. And we don't have to do that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not actually in favor or opposed to it. I'm just um, uh, communicating back what he has asked. So, does the design? Does that just mean the physical design, or does that mean the digital? Do, do we have oversight over the program as well? Well, I, I mean. I would say the functionality and the, I mean, we can, we can respond however we'd like. I mean, I think, I, I don't think he intends to limit, I think what he doesn't want us to do is to get all involved in the operations. Yeah. But I don't think he's unwilling to have us opine on any aspect of it, basically. So if we were to say the functionality and the design, 
I think if we use those two words, to, you know, I think, I mean, we're not making here a legal commitment. I think, you know, I mean, we can always choose to say we don't like the functionality, we don't like the way it looks, and we're not going to give you the grant. I think he just wants to get a pulse of where, of where we are on it, and I don't know how to exactly respond. <clears throat> I'd be okay with saying that yes, but I'd also would note that there's a lot of coordination to do, particularly with the revitalization committee in terms of way, what's it called? Wayfinding. So, uh, does that um, does that kind of commit us <coughs> to sole sourcing? If uh, I mean, if through the revitalization effort there were some other wayfinding proposal, um, does this pre-approval exclude us from pursuing that? Well, I would think that it would be, and I think in the spirit of what he's asking for, mm -hmm. it would. So, if yeah. if we think that that the that the wayfinding from revitalization might want to open up other options and so forth, we probably should say that and therefore say to him, you know, we're not prepared to do it in, partic for, in particular because of this. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a valid, I think it would be bit, sort of semi-bad faith to, to, yeah. to mm -hmm. that's kind of what he's looking yeah. to anchor mm -hmm. on, you know, so forth. Right. But I do think, personally, I, I do think that the revitalization project, the wayfinding was very important and therefore. Yeah. Yeah, I'm laboring because I wasn't here for the original presentation or whatever, but I, in reading through here, uh, something jumped out at me that he, and get, I may be wrong about this, um, responded to a question that he didn't need the money, he really just wanted it to be um, an indication of the support from the community. And I, was, I didn't know if that had more discussion had been made about that, and if so, maybe there was another way we could show him some support uh, rather than uh, cash. If he doesn't need the money, certainly. Okay. I, I, did, I just yeah. come late to the discussion. I think that's a really good point, and I think that, that is um, important perspective. Well, I think that um, having been part of the Economic Resources Committee that discussed this, I think that. We, we sort of agreed that if it's a good product, we would support it. Yeah, well, and, and we our, our feeling on it was that if by supporting it, I mean, forgive me if I'm, no, no. If, if, if by supporting it, we could help steer it toward um, further uh, integration with the revitalization efforts and further, you know, um, integration with the efforts of the EDC as a whole. Let's say it. Then, <coughs> then, um, is the same. No, I just I don't think even think he's even close to what we want to be looking at. So, got to really understand what it's going. Yeah, I mean, how I, it's going to function. And I think that if I don't we, know if we can promise any money at this point, if we like it. Well, but I, I think the fact is, if 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 we're still if we're not committing to give funds unless we like the functionality, the digital functionality, yeah. and the appearance of the um, object. Like if we still want the functionality to be working with the wayfinding, that's still a priority that it be. Yeah, I think in concept it, it's great. You know, um, if we want to commit to a concept that will come out the way we want to do it, I just don't really understand what we're gonna if we're voting on anything today. Or yeah, I don't. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. Yeah, just discussion. Well, I, I, um, John, yes, I just I've never. Witness somebody coming here asking for money that they don't need. I mean, he said, I don't really need the money, but I'm asking for it to get, some, well, that's our function here, is it? Is it not? I, th I think my impression of his ask was more that he, he is, his intention is to unroll this somewhere, and he wanted <coughs> to see that we want him to do it here. Is that a function? That's a very is that good question. What the EDC is, is, is a function that you That is a very is a good function. question. It, 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 town, it's a town or village in some, yeah. Well, there really isn't question. any other, there, I mean, yeah. there isn't any other entity, entity. Like, entity that yeah. we're the closest. Yeah, yeah. I, it seems to me that the, mo that the I'm going to sort of switch, just hearing, it, we all feel a little bit reluctant. We're like interested but reluctant. Mm -hmm. I think he's asking us to kind of, are we ready to go beyond that? And it seems like just informally, we're not. Mm -hmm. And so, I, and, and 
for me, the most important piece of that, maybe we each have different most important pieces, is your point, Barry, that wayfinding is clearly an important point of re revitalization. We don't know what that's going to look like. Signage is a big issue, and this affects signage. So I think we should, I think we should just sort of bite the bullet and basically say to him, listen, we're intrigued. This revitalization project, at a minimum, is kind of happening, and wayfinding is going to be very important. We're willing to set up an advisory committee, mm -hmm. and, and we would like to do that to advise you on it and to coordinate, help coordinate with the right station. And if you'd like us to do that, we'll do that. We're not prepared to go at this point beyond that. Yeah. That would be good to have him come to a meeting. Yeah, well, he, 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 he and we, sure, we'd be happy to have him come back to a meeting. I mean, I would be happy to have him. <coughs> if he wants to explain more or push us in a different direction yeah. or something. So my question would be then what, what would trigger it to another level? We I, I would just I would just suggest that if he does come back that he has a more he was concrete. a little yeah more concrete project I mean he was a little vague when he first came here and I think that's one of the hesitations and I think that's a big reason why no one here is super enthused about committing no funds product. because there's no product right. yet therefore what are we committing funds for was so the uh, revitalization <laughs> committee in a place where the kind of wayfinding aspect could be explored so we by the time he's ready that we haven't taken that on we're too busy okay. with with uh, pop, pop outs and and benches and uh pots and also some right. other stuff we haven't been approached but nobody's approached us to um to be involved with with uh, what's going on with that be happy to, but it's just never been a presentation to us. Well, I think the advisory committee would be the vehicle to get to yeah. engage. Okay, sure. Because that seems like an integral piece. Yeah. Sort of like yeah. he's got a, a concept for a, a, an SUV. It's cool, going to be a cool SUV, but we don't know if we need an SUV or a van or, you know, we don't know what we need yet. But his concept's more of a promotional mm -hmm. vehicle than anything else. He's using that for the promotional vehicle. Well, no, I mean, you can say that, but no, but I'm saying it's a it's it's a promotional vehicle because it allows people to take photographs. So it's it's very it's social media. It's basically what it is. Yeah. So, well, I think I can accurately represent. I mean, he, uh, if the group is okay with this, he kind of informally approached me because I know him a little bit. I'm happy to go back and basically say what I said a minute ago, if that still captures it, and that I think commits us to nothing. And he might say I don't want the advisory group, or he might say he wants it. And if he says the latter, then. Joe, it will definitely be a way to coordinate with revitalization, and let's see what we can see what comes of it. And if not, then he'll continue down his path and see what happens. Yeah, Once it may come back or not. Yeah. Joe, I like you for Say what? I like you for the You like what? <laughs> All right. So. Thank you. Good to yeah. Okay, next up, financial. Oh, wait, wait, well, uh, no? Can I have a question? Is this the appropriate time to submit grants or should it be with later on? Uh, well, the grant cycle, when's the next grant deadline? May well, 29th. May 29th. So uh -huh. May 29th would be the appropriate time to submit a grant application. And then if it was submitted May 29th and um, hopefully approved, it would take another month. Yep. It doesn't get approved until July. Well, that's that's the conundrum that the revitalization project is in right now because uh, we've been working very hard on this and we've um, accumulated some costs um, and have developed a plan and we'd like to get it implemented this summer. If we wait until July, by the time things are bought and in place, we're in August, maybe even September, and the season's done. That makes sense. I'm sorry, I thought you were referring to community grants. Grants on the what? Path. I thought you were referring to community grants. No, no, no. No, I'm community. Okay. I'm, I have the, the grant proposal is from the revitalization project, and I'd like to so know I think if we can get them hustled along as quickly as possible. Totally. But I think, is this, is this something that we were intending to talk about on May 13th? I don't think so. But we can. Okay. We as can. long I mean, if, if May 13th is a, a better time, where you want to devote some time. I, my impression was the 13th was for one specific issue. And so that's why I'm bring, that's why we worked all day today getting that's this thing to get us for tonight. Um, we, if you want to attach it to May 13th, fine. 
as long as we can get this thing moving along. I, I think I think the yeah the May thirteenth thing is to decide on larger yeah funds for a large project as this all is. sorts of stuff really. What's like not specific the meantime, projects sort of. Yeah. We talked about that was kind of a focus to twenty. It's almost it, my impression of the thirteenth is kind of a reorganizational thing. You know, looking at what we do, how strategy we do it. Strategy and priority time. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. we can avoid specific yeah. projects, yeah. even if they fit into the strategy. That's yeah. what would be my preference. So. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to go back to procedural, and that is that if there is an item that you want the, the commission to vote on, it needs to be on the agenda as a warned item. So that if you want to have funds that are are you, you're requesting outside of the grant cycle, but as a as an EDC grant, it needs to be submitted so that it can be part of our agenda and part of our formal meetings. So and, we can't and go through the whole cycle. Is that what you're suggesting? No, 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 no. I'm just saying we need it ahead. You need to submit it ahead of time so that so the public has a chance to know that it's going to be voted on at a meeting. So that so that you can at this point wait until the June meeting. But you know if if. You decide you could add it to the, the May 13th meeting. Give, given that, then can we put it on the 13th agenda? Yep. I mean, I. I, I that can be all right. The, even though the chairs, we had right. set, we had decided it would be a single issue meeting. I mean, this won't take long. Yeah. And we'd like to get it going. Um. Is that right? Can I? Can I can talk to Charlie about that, and we can decide, or let Charlie decide? I, can we decide as a commission to put it on there? Sure. Like, what time? The meeting starts at six. Yeah. So we have. Yeah, I think that we. Okay. It's okay with me. I mean, it's, I, I think the strategy stuff is important. Yeah. But, but if this is the only practical solution to get it done. Well, or, or we can do it right now and say, you know, well, let's let's we do, can't it right do it right now. So we can't vote. Order. We can't is vote on the money right now because it's not on the agenda. I mean, that's. I mean, I'm just yeah. going by the the regulations. Yeah. I mean, we could. You guys no, which could do what you want, important. but it, it could be challenged at some point. So can I just ask a quick question about yeah, that? No, At the beginning any. of the select board agenda, the first item is additions and changes yes. to the agenda. Right. 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 It, 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 can we have additions and changes to our agenda? You know, that, I'm not exactly sure how that works. We okay. probably could, but you're supposed to, and this is, this is in the, the fine wording, is you're supposed to do it at the very beginning of the meeting. So we've already missed that. I didn't, I didn't know that this was even coming up. Um, and then it has to be included as part of it. I, I would do some research to find okay. out exactly what it means, but there yeah. are, you know, working in a in the public venue like this, there are rules and regulations that we're supposed to be doing, and mm -hmm. yeah. we can't be too casual. Absolutely, especially when it comes to money. Well, well you know, given well, that, I, given that, uh, yeah. it 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 occurred to me that at one point. Prior to you being the court, at Sustainable Woodstock sat right there and was granted $20,000 for a housing project in 10 minutes. It happened, it was spoken to, it was asked about, and we voted on it. And there were a couple of guys here who said, boy, that worked pretty quick, didn't it, Michael? I think it was five grand, but yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. five grand. No, it, it, was, it was a chunk of money, but we submitted an application. It was on the agenda. And, and if it was on the agenda, then that's... I don't okay. being on well, I, I, I know I Beth, sent an application. I just have a question because it's, I mean, is it really a grant if it's a subcommittee of your com of your EDC? I, I mean, I, you know, why doesn't it come under civic revitalization as a proposal? Because I think that the committee went ahead and did due diligence by having that special meeting, the public hearing, as requested, and then came back with recommendations from the public for this. Yeah, and, look, and, and I don't know what the answer is. I am loath to run afoul of any <coughs> legal <laughs> ramification, any problems with the Vermont Open Meetings Law, with the agenda not reflecting what it's supposed to reflect. And I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood what, when you asked if it was the right time for a grant. I thought you were talking about mm -hmm. community grants. Yeah. So that was a miscommunication to begin with. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know what the answer is. And I, I think if you have, if you can point to the right, if you can point me to the regulation or to any place where I could get guidance, I would be more than happy to say, <laughs> let's talk about this well, under revitalization. Could we do the following? Could we, could we learn about the proposal? 
Yep. Yep. To see if, come to an informal point of Great. view, and then agree that that informal point of view will become formal if we're allowed to do it, right. and then subsequently we'll figure so out. So why don't we talk about that under civic revitalization? Right. Right. right? Exactly. Okay. And we can you can right. present what you're thinking about, and then we can. Because that is on the agenda in that. Right. In those two right. words, yeah. right? Which and is even your point. if we don't, <laughs> we don't have to vote on it. That's great. Right. So, I've got so, another item that probably a new business, but similar. It, it's spending money, um, but I think uh, Beth, that we're I think we're you, you're right. It's kind of an EDC thing, so it's it it comfortably it can fall outside of the grant cycle. But I think to the you know it wasn't warned, and nobody knows that it. We're voting to spend that money. I think that's the yes. that's a fair point. It should have been more so, it yeah. needs so to the be public can come in and, yeah. and discuss it, even yeah. though they had discussed it two or three times prior to this. Right. Yeah, but there's no, there's no, I don't have any documentation right now, so there's nothing yeah. available. No, I think we're agreeing on that. Yeah, so, okay, okay. Yeah. so let's okay. move on and we'll come back to that point under civic re revitalization. Okay, financial report. John is going to do me the favor of discussing the things that he's better at discussing than I am. Um, so this is the top little section of the financial report, but I think it's the most salient part. In the second column, full year revenue, you can see this hasn't changed. Uh, it may have gone up a teeny bit, actually. This may be, a month. I can't remember. But anyway, you can see the relatively healthy growth in the options tax revenue. Um, and so uh, I think we discussed that last meeting. And then uh, you can see that uh, we started off slow, uh, meaning that we didn't grant all of our funds. In 2018, we did. Um, and then this year, we're now at about 55%. And um, I think that used to be, in my opinion, that used to be a, a bad mark. We're supposed to give it all out. I think in light of our upcoming strategy discussion, it's neither good nor bad. It, it just is what it is. Um, and on the right-hand side, we, if we don't grant any more funds this year, um, or don't make any major ones, we'll have about $450,000 of grant funding available in addition to what would begins next year. So that would allow us to take on um, larger projects if we found them. John, is that reflect committed also? Yeah, unencumbered. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this yeah, is unencumbered. unencumbered is not committed. It's the same okay. as we, this, that may not be exactly what we have in the bank. I assume we have more than that in the bank because not all of the committed yeah. has been paid, but yeah. we're going to pay. You know, it's I think this is wonderful. I'm so glad you did this. I really am. It's great to see it. Yeah. Big cool for everyone. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. All right. Anything? Else? No. Okay. Coordinator report, Sally. Um, I don't have anything to add. Um, it was I was away on vacation this past month, so I haven't didn't do a lot. I will report that the Visioning Steering Committee has scheduled a kickoff meeting, community meeting for Wednesday, May 29th, at Billings Farm and Museum. It will start at 5:30, and that will be an opportunity for people to find out about the process. And we're also hoping to do some presentations of um, community projects that are ongoing. So. I haven't been in contact, but we're hoping the revitalization group will be there. We're hoping some people from housing will be there um, and other opportunities to talk about some community projects that are ongoing so that people can be um, part of that. Um, oh, and John has. <laughs> and these are, these are the list of things that are upcoming um, that I've already added. So, uh, oh yeah, we have a name for our, our visioning pro project is Our Woodstock, Our Future. So. Um, those are just items that are coming up. But any it's exciting questions? to see the special EDC meeting and the visioning right next to each other. Yes. Think about it. Mm. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions. Well, yeah, it's TBD because this room is taken, I, but we think we can get it. But I, we, I, have, didn't, we I haven't didn't, gotten it. It hasn't yet. been confirmed right. yet, yeah, so yeah. you will fall. We'll Hopefully it'll be that. here. So. All right. Um, any comments or questions? Seeing none. Um, subcommittee updates. Economic resources. We have scheduled the special meeting, mm -hmm. and we are looking forward to receiving a number of grants. Um, a couple of us had a discussion um, about the 
principles that the ERS brought forward. Um, and that led to a, a possible draft agenda. Um, but it's truly a draft agenda. I mean, we just made it up. So could I just put that up yep. and show you all? This is a, a possible discussion agenda, basically in three parts. Um, first is looking back and going back to the very beginning, the text of the of the motion of the um, what is it called? Motion warning. The the the, the thing that established yep. the EDC, established the funding. Yep. Um, and the early discussions, which took place for about 12 months based on the minutes of the select board and so forth. So by the end of 2016, there were a clear set of priorities and the organization structure was roughly set and so forth. And by the way, the priorities were, were, were these. This is from a, a December 2016 meeting. And what's really interesting about them is the wording is a little bit different. They're not 100% exactly what the ERS was talking about, but they're really close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, partner with commercial property owners and tenants, thriving retail sector, entrepreneurial environment, infrastructure and facility improvements, convert visitors to res residents, um, which we assume also included marketing and the website and the social media and so forth, expanding recreational offerings. So, you know, it's pretty comforting to sort of see that on the 13th, we may not need to be spending too much time debating what our priorities should be. But the next section is what have we learned? What have we focused on? What haven't we focused on? Where have we achieved positive results? Where, where haven't we and why? And given this, pr proposing four questions that we, so we might just take 15 or 20 minutes on the first two points and then turn our attention to four questions. And it would be great if you have other questions or if you think these are okay. One, do our priorities need adjusting or do we maintain them as originally laid out? Maybe we tweak them. My own instinct is, uh, is that we can maintain them pretty close. Two is do we want to make bigger bets and pursue multi-year funding or not? Three is are we organized to make progress against our priorities? If we are, great. If not, how should we change our organization? And fourth is kind of a standalone question that I think we've all talked about informally, which is how do we build greater community support and engagement? I shouldn't just say support. So this might be the agenda for the 13th. React, uh, I thought it would, it's useful to have the agenda in advance of the meeting <laughs> so that we can think about it and maybe prepare you know, a few slides. Like on the first two points, we can put together some basic facts. That, you know. So any reaction, thoughts about this? We have one from the audience. So is that um, up on the website so we can print it and have something to refer to before the 13th? Uh, it will be, but it isn't. I was just okay. written about half an hour. And it's just a draft. Okay. It the agenda. It's, it's just right, but but the agenda, uh, is it going to come up before the agenda? So we have... Yeah, I'll, absolutely. I can okay. give it to you today, and I'll post it on the website tonight. Okay, that's that fine. That won't be able to find it, but we'll be Yeah, able to I'll show it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'm sorry, I'm not just picking on no, you. Yes. <laughs> and the only thing I'll say is I, I have started a Dropbox, and I don't know if John has pulled any information. So some of the historical documents that are from when it was, you know, the first years of discussion and other things are, I'm collecting those so that we can have some background information Great. so that if people want to look and see, you know, the history, basically. And that stuff is really valuable. So I'll, I'll if, if all of that's okay to yeah. go on to the website, fine. So by, if you look tomorrow morning, there'll be a, a, the next meeting of, under meetings, there'll be another meeting called March, it's May 13th. 13th yeah. And it'll have, Sally, all of your stuff in it, plus it'll have this page. Thank you. So, um, is there, what do, you, what do you picture as the format of the meeting with respect to how the, the, uh, the uh, commission engages and how the community engages with the commission during the discussions? No special <coughs> format. I mean, I, 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 Charlie and Julia asked if I would moderate it, but, but, I don't, it, but it's, I think, going to feel more like when we debate a grant mm -hmm. with people in the audience than it is any kind of, than it is going to be like the visioning project. Right. I think you know. we would like for there to be some uh, degree to which the community can participate, oh, yeah. but also that um, <coughs> it's not a call and response, like we didn't right. bring something up, the community was like it, that it's more of a, um, that it can move forward with more agility than perhaps that might allow. Mm -hmm. Right. And I see the end result being some sort of uh, proposal to 
um, at least at least from the grand standpoint of where where we're going to go. And I would almost again focus on 2020 as on that year we're going to have X amount of expenses, X amount of large grants, X amount of small grants, and bam. And I would say also that given given question number three of how are we organized to make progress, it might also also include proposals. Not to, so budget might be you know the answers to questions one and two yeah. would be reflected in a budget. Right. But the answer to question three might be reflected in which subcommitt subcommittees do we have, yeah. or how do we engage with the public, or do we keep having a cycle of grants, or do we do you know continuously organizing concepts yeah. should also be on the table. I think, Definitely. and that's question three. And then question four is a is a, another topic, which is you know, yeah, this uh, this might be minor. I I think it's important that we physically are arranged in a format where we can see each other to talk to each other okay. and not next that's, to each other. That's a, tough one. That's a great and idea. Not what? Right. And not what? Uh, not be able to see see each other and, oh, and, and talk to each other. Oh, table concept? It's a, it's a work session. That's yeah. why it's yeah. TBD, because we knew that yeah. that was coming. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the table good good job, Sam. the audience to sit that too? What's that? Is the table going to be big enough for the audience to sit at, too? You sit in the middle. <laughs> I'll sit in the middle. Yeah. Well, just well, where you should be. Right? We'll work on this, Tim. I think yeah, it's yeah. a good point. Yeah, yeah. it's a good this point. This is not, a, not conducive to that kind of thing. You could easily make a circle. If you put the table in the V and you keep the yeah, chairs going around in a circle. You're not allowed yeah. to move these tables. I think we could get permission. It's illegal. <laughs> I was told. Okay. Yeah, well, what's the procedure, procedure to go through amazing. to get permission? Because this meeting happens before the next select board meeting. The we'll sign is right over your head. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll figure out that. It's a really good point. We'll figure out how to do it. Yeah, you can do it around with just the chairs spread out. <laughs> Other suggestions for the agenda? Is it uh, big questions that are missing? It looks like a good way to get to where we want to go. Okay. That's a good start. All right. Thanks for doing that. Okay. That was very good job. Thanks. Awesome. Um, next up, civic <coughs> revitalization. Um, this is your time, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Court. <laughs> I God, I've been waiting for that, Court. Um, we've been meeting a lot, and a lot has been going on. Um, it's it's a little difficult to sum it all up. Uh, I've met with Phil and gone over. What we have, what we have decided on, and what we'd like to accomplish, and he has been very supportive and very involved in what we talked about. I took Robbie, uh, listen, I took a walk around town, and uh, I identified to him um, areas of bump outs that we thought might work, and. Um, he agreed totally about the concept. There was one location he didn't agree on, so obviously we'll not deal with that. And he made some suggestions about ideas that we didn't think about, and uh, we're incorporating them into our plan. Um, Ray has been working very hard um, calling uh, people about prices on Tables. I mean, yeah, not not picnic tables. Um, benches, uh, pots for the bump outs, and uh, other things that we might need to get this thing going. Um, um, Mary Lee Camp and I have talked quite a bit. She's very concerned that um, the Tigo landing be part of what we're doing, and I. I completely agree with that, and Jeff Conner and I spoke about it, and um, he shared with me that the um, trustees have a beautification fund of $5,000 that they want to apply specifically to the Teagle landing. It won't be enough. So um, he's, uh, what we're suggesting is that maybe the EDC can have a matching fund of $5,000. This part of what I'm going to present. Um, um, to make a total of ten thousand dollars just to vote exclusively to the Tigo Landy. The steps alone are going to cost five grand. I mean, we talked about the steps of the existing ones, and they're pretty deteriorated. And to replace them with more 
uh, railroad ties, you're going to have to replace them again in another 10 years. So we thought the best way to do it is put stone down and leave it at that. Uh, and a lot of other things that might go on down there. Um, we worked all day today trying to get these grants together. Uh, Beth did a great job um, putting it all up. So I don't know if you want me to go over these things right now and let you know what we're proposing. This is the one grant for the $5,000 matching <coughs> fund with the trustee beautification fund to be applied towards Tingle Landing. This is three grants total. This one is for um, $15,000 to purchase pots 30 inches high, right? About 24 Which inches wide. Which was diameter. Yeah, to uh, identify different spots in town that may be traffic hazards and would also uh, address the traffic hazard issue plus really make the town look a lot better. Uh, that's for $15,000. And then um, a, a proposal for $7,000 for benches, uh, 14 benches, four in five feet wide uh, at locations around town. Well, what we very fortunate in having is Jack Ross, he's part of our subcommittee, and he's a local landscape architect, knows the area extremely well, very talented guy, and he's been with us uh, just about every meeting and through every, every phase of this. So he's going to help us about where, well, he has been helping us about where these, these benches should be placed. And, um, and we talked about trash cans, and they're going to come up at a later date. Uh, so, so far, that's it. Any questions? Go ahead. Have you been in touch with, has the Design Review Board seen the specific pot? Well, we talked about that today, as a matter of fact, and I asked Jack specifically, who was also a member of the Design Review Board, and he said his comments were he doesn't feel it's going to be a problem with that as long as we get um, assurances from the trustees. And I Assurance said, assurances pertaining to what? Assurances of what? Assurances that they would be acceptable. The, the, the design review board is an advisory committee, and they don't actually put up permits. What's your question, Joy? Go ahead. You got something on your mind? No, no. I mean, it just that it strikes me that the money before the approval, like the, we're not a design for, but like, we're not. Design review. We're not opining. On yeah, that. we're not the people to opine on. The aesthetics. Right, but Jack so Rossi is, and he's on the design review board. And um, so the design review board come to us with the grant, maybe, or something. I don't know how that works. Say what? Well, or, or if they, if I mean, uh, yeah, design review board. Had, they're only an advisor. They, they, they don't put them. Advise, they don't. Yeah, yeah they, they don't issue any. Can permits. I just out of curiosity try to what, what is the pot? How does the pot work with the ha traffic hazard? With the what? The traffic hazard area. The yeah, what, what was designed, what, what was identified are um, the crosswalks that go from the green to the covered bridge, from the inn to the green, from Gillingham's to the, uh, what was the apothecary, from Bentley's to the, the pharmacy, from um, the vacant lot to uh, right next to where Mount Bird is. Um, and the chief felt that if the, he would, he felt that these would be very helpful in um, pedestrian safety because they would allow the pedestrian to be seen before they get struck upon by the traffic. Also without without signage. It also signage. slows traffic down. Yeah. And, and it slows the traffic, slows the traffic, down. traffic down. Um, Jill had a... Oh, it was just to talk about the genesis of the design review board. It was um, Bev, what's her name? Who is on the design review board, who was particularly interested mm -hmm. in having a say um, and had come to that meeting and just w wondered if she could be included, the design review board could be included. So I don't think it has to be official, it's just like a well, nod to the people who are volunteering for to the police aims. It's, it's just a process, like any and I think that we reached out um, for the meeting on the 
whenever it was, the 18th of April, the special public hearing. No. no. And, and, the, and the, what happened? Well, the what people showed up uh, looked at different, we had different um, ideas on the wall and they chose the style barrels they liked or the style pots they liked, the planters they liked. Who is that? The public. people who the people showed up to the meeting. Got it. So these are items that have been chosen by the public. The public. Yeah. Just small. Or the people who came to the meeting. Yeah, or, uh, uh, let me clarify that point just a little bit. I forget exactly what the date was, but there was an, another meeting after the 21st where we invited the public to um, voice their opinion and what they would like uh, on specific issues, like, for example, picnic tables. Well, as it turns out, we don't need any picnic tables. We've got enough in inventory right now. So we probably won't be asking for any money for picnic tables. So that's not an issue. The other one was uh, what type of benches. And it seems as though, oh, these are the pots. Uh, this bench seemed to be the guy that everybody seemed to want. And then there was the pots, and this seemed to be the pot that everybody seemed to want. So that's what we're, probably, that's what we're gonna go with. Now, there was another discussion about um, trash barrels, but uh, we're not gonna discuss that right now because we're gonna bring that up in a subsequent meeting and I can, I can go into more details then. So, so yeah. does that request come from the pots, the 15,000, does that cover what goes in the pots? No. Yes. 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 For, yes. for what, one season, three seasons? Yes, one season. Seasons. It won't last more than one season, am I right? Right. And what happens to the pot? The pot will last, right? The pot will last, but the plant won't. Oh, yeah, the pot will last for a long time. Is the plan to put something in the air? Terracotta? Or is it polyurethane? Okay. One question at a time. What? What was your question? I got it. Yes, the question. Oh, okay. So, when you'd like to hear the answer, what was that? We're not going to divulge it. Just ask them what was made of the pots. So, is there a plan to keep them full? Year round? Year round. No, no, no. It's a seasonal thing. Uh, at the uh, at the end of the fall season, we got November like first. That kind of stuff. Okay. And then what happens spring. next spring? We bring spring. Where do they go for the winter? Yeah, but they they don't have any plants on them anymore. No, we have to replant. Who? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Where? How is that? Who does Maybe that? Maybe we'll work with the high school it? like we do with the baskets. You know, the high school does a great job with the flower baskets. But I think the question is, is there a is there a future funding a implied plan. commitment or even just awareness? That it's going to be three thousand dollars a year, you know, from year that's two that's onwards. Awareness. That's yeah. an excellent question. I don't think there is going to be. I mean, we we haven't gone that far because we've been working so hard just getting this right. thing together. What we have come up with is that um, there's a strong possibility that the, the people who water the plants, the, um, you know, will be able to take maintain these over the summertime. Now, in this, as soon as the fall comes around. Um, I plan to ask the town to pick them up like they do benches and other things. But town and village. village. It's one and the same. Is it? I'll get it. Okay. And a okay. strong possibility that they'll be maintained. I mean, or is that a commitment? Like it, it, I, uh, I, I uh, all uh, of this uh, sounds good, but there are a bunch of steps that to me don't, don't okay, seem. Okay, name the steps. They're, well, a commitment that they're going to be full and pretty all summer long yes. and taken care of financially yes. and that, not gonna that's, just, that's the flowers aren't going to die in July. Right. Is that that's in the commitment. budget? Yeah. And that's in the budget? That's well, not in the budget. What's in the budget in. is the original planting and uh, the continual maintenance over the summer will be done by the people, like I just mentioned, that do the hanging pots. So Great. I think it'll be a stronger application. So if the hanging pots haven't died by July, I doubt these are. Right. Yeah, and I, I'm just, I was confused because yeah. in Beth's application for the, the hanging pots, there was an itemization for the plantings and then the maintenance therein. Okay. So when you said probably, they will be rolled into that. Probably we'll be doesn't strike me Elijah. as... I think there's a place for that, right? For long-term a plan in the application? Or you know, is it sustain it sustainable that kind of thing? I mean, it, it's a strong application if it's, and this is how they're going to be ma maintained, you know, in in the future. The, pot, the, pot, the, the pots are made of of material 
that don't require much maintenance at all. The only thing that's going to be maintained is what goes in them. And which is yeah, part, part, part of it, because yeah, probably it some more flowers and stuff like that. Yeah. And well, then the it looks like the benches, uh, their wood benches, is there? How yeah, will those? Teak, how will those be maintained? They're not they're, they're maybe Ray, can, Ray has a lot of experience with them because they were they were um, part of what he had to take care of at BU. The teak benches can just go outside and weather naturally. Yeah. There's nothing that, you know, I mean, yeah. if you want to treat them to keep them looking brand new, yeah. you can, but the, the thing about teak is it just ages to a nice grayish color and stays that way. Stays that way. One of the things we have to keep in mind for this May 13th meeting is all these things that last just for a year become yes. all of a sudden a budget item yes. that we have to consider every year. And so, definitely. Well, and if there's no plan for them for the winter or if. I, so, my. my I, all of these, this sounds very reasonable, and I think if we circulate the, the application such that where we can um, look at them before the May 13th, this, these funds sound very reasonable, but it does strike me that approving the funds before the design review board, I, I do not feel comfortable being the person, I, I don't consider the EDC the entity that has aesthetic oversight about what goes into the village. Well, so to me, I don't necessarily feel comfortable approving the funds before someone with a degree of aesthetic oversight of what the village is going to look like as a whole has some say in it. And, and can I add another thing? Are, are we buying recycled and, and well-sourced wood and things like that so we're going to keep the village sustainable as we're buying new things? Have we, where, where are this, where's the stuff coming from? Yeah, what we're buying are benches. Yeah, but where does the teak come from? The teak's not usually, the teak can be good or bad, wood, depending where it comes from. Where does tea come from, right? Eh? Tea trees. Tea trees. No, I have no idea where the name is. A lot of well, those forests are not It would be a good question to ask is to keep yeah. more people, and to, to just ask more qualifying questions. Mm -hmm. But that, that to me is what the design, mm -hmm. what, what, what a review board would be handling. And that's not necessarily something that I feel prepared right. to. But we can make we could make an approval contingent on yes. uh, contingent on the yeah. design yeah. review. Yeah, that's that's done all the time. That's yeah. easy to do. Okay. Then one one general question. Um, other than the five thousand from the village at the committee to Tigo, um, do you anticipate any other sources of funding for revitalization projects other than EDC? It looks like this is right now EDC is the only source. Right now it's just and what do you anticipate? I don't have it for anticipation. Okay. okay. I, do you have a, I, I know that when um, Du Bois and King submitted it, they had a list of potential grants and other funding sources. Have you looked into any of those? Because I know that there is, there are a couple that are coming up that are. Um, the only, the only one that's in there is that, uh, that I have had time, and any of us have had time to look at, uh, um, the uh, grants from uh, v trans yeah if we got into which would take a long process a downtown designation and that's a process in itself and then you become eligible for some of those grants and another one is one that you went to didn't you was right but there's also there's a bike head grant which sort of is a is a village centered one so that's that's a v trans grant but it's you don't have to be a downtown designation so there are other granting sources out there but i don't know if you've looked at any of them yet and i I try, I've done a few for the recreation, but I haven't done them specifically for the village. So it's, there, are, there are definitely sources out there, we just have to find them. What is a quick question about the, pop, the, the bump out supplies? Mm -hmm. uh, do those impact plowing at all? Are they They're not going to be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is that? Oh, right. Joe, where are they being stored? Do you know? Well, the, the bump out is not a permanent. No. No. No, 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 okay. no it's no. a test and it is. Summer only, it can't. Oh, summer, fall. summer, fall, yeah, yeah, yeah. spring, summer, fall. Yeah. It can't yeah. because yeah. of the plowing. We yeah. won't know if it'll work until after the roads are repaved. So, right. Yeah. That'll be once you dig up the roads. I hope the fluorescent yellow color in the town. And where did you say they were going to be stored? Into town. Okay. So, so is the basic process going forward that we would then? consider, having had most or much of the discussion now, it wouldn't take a lot of time on the 13th and we're going to warn this and make it a, you know, and then consider yeah. the grant and John, finally vote on it. Yeah. 
Because, uh, you know, we wait until July or August and yeah. it's, yeah, it's, totally. it's a moon point. I would just say that I, I think that I, I would be in fit. I would be, I would make two, three comments. One is I'd be in favor of this. Two is I do think it would be useful between now and the 13th if you could provide as much detail as you can or just a little bit more detail on the ongoing maintenance. Like we've talked to the group and, and they, you know, I mean, it, it seems perfectly That's reasonable. That's a good point, yep. The third is I would ask the question. I, you know, I mean, can we stop right there? There's just the three of us working on this. Uh -huh. <laughs> And there's been a lot to do. Yeah. yeah okay. and, and we've been doing this for over a year now. Right. And we've been conducting meetings and going and visiting different boards and coming up with different prices and some ideas. And this, it's been a lot to do. I'm glad you're bringing up those details because, uh, quite frankly, there's been so much to do sometimes that you get things, some things get overlooked. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that uh, there are some things that you still would like us to look at. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take you literally at your word on that. That's <laughs> my reaction. <laughs> I'll choose to take you literally on this one. But the, the other question I would have, the third question, or the third comment is, Tigo's landing seems incredibly important. Um, and I guess a, a general question would be, what would it take, how much would it cost? I think the answer is more than 10000 To do what? To do it right. I, and I don't mean right like it's smarter to put in stones than than wood, but it may not be that smart to put in stones. <laughs> like, it's a so we have talked with Jack Rossi about that. Yeah. So, and I think that, that within the next week, we could do a walkabout with him. The committee could, could do to, to have his written opinion about what would I would just encourage you, and what would way, it I take? Would encourage you to do it by the 13th, given I mean, yeah. your point that there's only, you know, there's only yeah. so much time to go around. But I do think that, that you would That's be the group point. to answer the question, you know, we'd like to allocate 10,000, but there's, there's another option, which is 22,000, which would get us this, and here are the pros and cons. Because it, it's really a central um, feature well, I, of the yeah, plan, I, I, and I it think, looks terrible. I think, that, I think that's a great idea, John, but, you know, now we're talking, I think, you know, you're going to get into a lot more discussion. Yeah. And, and, uh, we're, so uh, I wouldn't tie probably it. another professional advice from somebody else. And I wouldn't, I would, I would not tie it to the five thousand dollar grant. I would say let's just approve that. But I'm just saying that yes. it'd be useful to know. Yes. Be, because right. sure. Well, so, so because next year, can then next year we right. could make improvements. This year, and, it might and be next year we can make them exactly further process. improvements. Right. Exactly. So, yes, that's a great point. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, we have four hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars in the budget. Why don't you do it all in one go and have a nice summer out of it? Okay, what? I'm excited to hear the question. Go for it. It feels like there's enough money in the budget. Why not just do it? Well, because Ask for the money. Part, of, part of the reason why is because there are other plans for some chunks of that money. And I think the, the idea, part of the May 13th plan is to examine um, proportions of where money is being spent. We don't want all of the EDC money to be like economic development in the town is not exclusively tied to <laughs> Boy, how, how pretty how it is. could you make Tilo and Lenny look for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Jack could give I'm sure Jack could give a ballpark figure. Yeah, I think oh, we'll, I think, we'll do that. Definitely. I think May thirteenth's discussion has a lot to do with the with the four hundred and how much money we Yeah, exactly. I think talking so <laughs> and, and the the large plan because if we did everything we do, we we are not even close to the money that we have. Exactly. So, but I, I agree, we can get some things done this year. Yeah. yeah. We can we can do it. I, I would be in favor of doing that on the thirteenth. Yeah. Well if you so if you do have time and can you come up with a plan B for Tigo's landing that's more expansive but maybe affordable, then I I, I, I would I, think, I would consider it I, I think I think we can all agree that this revitalization project is gonna take a while. It's gonna take years. And I think Tigo's Landing is going to be a part of it as an ongoing improvement <coughs> process. And anything you do near water like that, you've got to make sure you have all your safety precautions. As a village, we're responsible for that, so we put money into that. I don't know if currently there's something to keep people from going oh, in the water. Oh, they're it's always really in fun. there. Oh, What's that? The Could you imagine the, the water? The imagine the water was the way it was running uh, when it was almost to the top. Yeah. And imagine yeah. a little kid being taken down the river. So I, those are things you got to yeah. think about in these projects. 
Sorry, I'm in the business where we got to have to think about that all the time. So go ahead. Good point. All right. Could I just say one more thing? I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I just uh, part of this and part of the 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 wanting to get some is to support you and having something very visible that the community can say, geez, look at these nice new benches and look at the, the safety. I mean, it's really about supporting a committee that's kind of maybe been seen here I to think raise you up. This, this kind of project validates that we are actually doing something to the public. That point isn't lost. Yeah. All right, speaking of things that are also visible, um, recreation assets, any updates? You can jump. Sally? Well, Michael, Michael, we had, a, we had a, that, that one nice day we've had in the last two weeks, <laughs> we had an amazing site walk with our consultants. And we walked the, the river loop trail um, out along the river and back along the rail bed. And it was the consultants, you know, it, it was just a great walk yes. and we see so much potential there. So we have mapped out a, a route. We actually have a plan for moving forward and things that need to be done. Um, hopefully we will have something by the end of May that can be a, a public, <coughs> get the public involved, but we're still talking with landowners at this point and um, we will need to have those conversations before we can really go public with what we're doing. Um, I'm also researching a couple other grants for potentials for um, implementation funds so that we can start doing some of the um, actual work on the trail itself. Michael, anything to add? I don't think so. Um, there's so many different phases that could happen with this. So we're really just trying to figure out what's the quickest, cheapest, non-invasive way to do it. So phase one, two, three, twelve, it's coming. But it's a real project. And we went out there and realized how, how nice it is and how, how what a what a benefit it will be to our community and asset. It's awesome. Does this seem like a like reasonable short term project to get something happening or is it you know, how much development or clearing or, you know, what, what's we're, kind of the general scope? Right now, we're trying to use as much of, there are, there are some farm roads, there are some, some sort of casual paths, and then there's the rail bed. So there are different ways that we can do portions of it mm -hmm. without much work. There are a few places where there are, there are some issues, so mm -hmm. we'll have to deal with them. But our consultants are very positive about finding reasonable solutions to them. Mm -hmm. Great. It would be great to be able to use that when? by the end of the summer. Oh, it would be. I mean, yes, that's the plan. But you know, I think to Beth's point, the, 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 I think there's a, a significant benefit in being able to publish a map, even if it's proposed, and even if to some extent it doesn't have all the approvals. You know, I mean, certainly the regulatory approvals and water approvals, if there are any, but even the landowner approvals. Right. I, I don't want to put us in a bad negotiating position, but I think you know, I do think we should be, you know, the, the trail is different from revitalization, yeah. and that's a good thing. Yeah. And if we could, if, you know, if in May, at the end of May, Memorial Day weekend, you know, or the next week, we could publish just one, you know, one poster with a map on it that gets on the front page of the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great. It, be that helpful. would really. Yeah. It would also be fun for people in the community, or for me, even, as I'm walking around. Yeah. I don't know where right. you're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so it would be So great. if there's a way to tweak it to, towards that, which may not be precisely optimal, but would be good from yeah. a yeah. community point of view. We need to we need to reconnect with um, the major landowner and make sure they're all on board first before we go too much further. But that would be awesome to get. Can I make one more comment, please? Um, as far as the civic realization. Probably, and, and John brought up some good points, and I'm, I'm glad he did. But part of what's been going on, I think you should be more aware of, we've been working very hard on this, but we've been kind of racing against the clock because we like to get something done in the summer. And so in order to do that, we really had to put the pedal to the metal 
to gather as much information as we could, and as many ideas as we could, from as many people as we could, in as quick a time as we could, and consolidate that, and try to get it here in, in a timely manner to get this thing done uh, for the summer. So with that, I'm glad you brought up those points, because in the, in the, uh, in the rush to get things done, so that we could have some visual effects for the summer, we might have missed a couple of points. So do you need more help? Are there folks on the uh, the review board that would want to participate? Do you think you're going to want to participate with us? I don't know. What do you, you think, Ray? They didn't show up to the meeting. <laughs> we'll we'll they, work they, on that. We're doing one yeah, the review. We and, and yeah, we've we'll had like Jack's been a big help. Uh, we'll Carolyn, Carolyn, Carolyn Kimball came in one uh, and sat in one of the meetings, and she was informative about some some things. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's moving. It's going. All right. Um, next up, is that it for recreation assets? Yep. Cool. Next up is website promotion. Which? Uh, yeah, I'll give a real brief update. It's nothing really major, but it uh, still things are moving along well. Obviously, it's uh, for websites this time of year being slower um, time period, especially the tourism side. It, you'll see a little dip, but still doing much better than last year at the same time. Um, so the one thing we do need to make sure is that we're getting events up there uh, more. And I don't know if you have anything to say on that from uh, getting people to get their special events onto the calendar, right? which is very helpful and that's one thing she said we're lacking on. Um, well, and every, every nonprofit in the area has a username and password and the ability to get their events up and I'll just encourage them to continue to do that and we could send out a an email just to those folks to you know because we're public I'm in the process of doing what um, the area guide at this moment yeah. so there are a whole boatload pages and pages and pages and pages of events so yeah this is whole calendar argument issue if you don't know, that's okay. Yes, no, they do. They, they have been doing their movies, etc. Um, I haven't gotten anything for the area guide yet, but I might be able to help. So, and if our coordinator can actually do more loading ups on the calendar as well, that'd be helpful because I think we can help push that. It's it does. If if I'm the person that's in charge of content and I want to see results for us. That is something I think we as a committee should help keep pushing. So if we're lacking from um, individual businesses and, and uh, organizations uh, loading stuff up, we should at least make the effort to, to try to help as much as we can to well, get it loaded. Well, yeah, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, we had our first um, editorial board meeting. Uh, so we're uh, the, the editorial, we have two great new people on the editorial board, uh, Jennifer Vincent and Tom Remp from Billings Farm. Uh, so that was really, we, we had a, Beth was there, we had a great meeting um, and made a lot of real headway for integrating the newsletter content um, and the social media content, given that Facebook and Instagram are two of the primary pushers to the website, um, integrating the content across platforms and making sure that the um, what's being pushed to Instagram and Facebook is timely and connected to events um, that are happening, which is then connected to the website and it all works together such that as everyone promotes their individual events, they're also promoting the town at yeah. large. Yeah. So I think uh, having sitting down and looking uh, at a calendar in a timely, color-coded, forward-looking, yearly yeah. basis was incredibly really helpful, helpful yeah. to, to make sure that that is working as optimally as it can. So, and, the website. Website. and if someone has, has problems with events, Kathy, you know, Kathy will, will well, you know, will yeah. put them up or whatever. So it's not, you know, I think between Katie and, and the three of us were, yeah. and, you know, Billings Farm is, you know, yeah. So. Is the website promoted to like guests at the end and uh, other? Uh, do, is there a, some a process where all the people who are coming here and staying in different places might have access to it? Because that 
Yes. One, they would it would make it good for them to have all that information in front of them while they're here, but also they might take it away and, and think about using it when they go home. Yeah, I mean the answer is that. I mean, if you're um, you know if you're doing the right thing, you you definitely have it on your site to link link to it. And I know that I know the resort does have that. So. Um, so if I walk into a, if I go into a room at the resort, my my guest room, is there is there some if I say I wonder what's going on in this town, is there some way that they might be directed well, we towards have our website? Standard in our room, so <laughs> um, yeah, we are, our first thing you go in and log in, you're going into the Woodstock Inn website, and we're loaded up with stuff that's all over town, so. So no, is the answer. No, answer <laughs> no. But I let's look at it differently. Let's not look at it when people are here totally. I mean, it's a good way to look at it, but let's look at, at a way of drawing people here and being able to be very visible, ser searching, uh, search-wise. Totally. Think yeah. right now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think Larry's point is well. No, it is a good that, point. That while people here. are here, it, it it would tie in with our one of our points yeah. was converting visitors to frequent visitors and then to residents that right. the more they can the more people who are here know about things like for example Larry right now the top referrals to the website were Facebook housebeautiful.com um, Woodstock VT's Instagram account so that's why when I'm referencing the different platforms working together Facebook and Instagram are both sending to the website right now they're two of the three top refer referrers so there is more work to be done as far as getting referrals from elsewhere. Yeah, and, and remember, we're, we're relying <coughs> on all natural search. So we have yeah. got to do, as this committee, we have an obligation to uh, learn how to, be, to, to make this site work a lot better for us. And part of that is spe spending some money uh, in advertising. And we're not doing any of that right now. So. Um, there's some great opportunities, some great misses there. There's even opportunities in social media. So um, I do think it's good to have Tom on the committee. Yeah, I think Tom likes. He's Facebook, really? not Instagram, but Facebook. He knows very well. Um, and uh, Jennifer knows Instagram well. We have met somebody on our team who knows it well. Um, so um, there's definitely a lot of opportunity for more video too. Um, and we have a great video. A video. I don't know if you've seen the Lossal video that. Yes, Billings I've seen fun. the Wassel video. Yeah, yeah, I have the Wassel video. Yeah. It's great, yeah, and it's going to get up there. Um, so, uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm just looking at all this. I mean, our Facebook numbers are tiny, so um, that has uh, that has opportunity there. Um, the uh, yeah, just the top performing pages seem to stay the same, uh, which is which is good. I mean, even though. Um, events calendar is still number three so you know communicating that as people do go there and if you don't have your event on there you're obviously missing an opportunity so um, there's a ton of little things you can analyze in here but well, we will. that's why we have a committee so All right. that's it. Oh, well, no. on to other business um, the EDC coordinator contract extension uh, so Sally's Contract is um, up this month. It's up uh, last week. Last week. So the plan has been to. So what? What Charlie and I were thinking is that the best plan moving forward is to extend Sally's contract for two months so that we can get on the town calendar, um, and then we can assess exactly what we really, really need um, uh, per our May thirteenth um, mm -hmm. meeting. And we can see uh, what. What's, what's the best plan for moving forward? Do we want to just extend for another year once we're on the town's administrative payment calendar? Um, or is there another path that we want to explore? So, but we figured that it was not necessarily a conversation to be having at this moment in time, given that we're out of sync with town contracts and that we're about to have a um, high level strategy. I have, a, I have a question about that. Given that, um, When she was hired, discussion was done um, under what's the word? Executive session. Executive session. Would would the extension also have to fall under an executive session discussion? 
personnel. I think was the. You, I think you, it you don't could, have to do it, but it doesn't have to. You can to. only do it if you want to. Um, if, but I think what Julia didn't mention is that when this position was created last year, there were enough funds to cover a two-month extension, so there's no additional funds needed to extend it. That, yeah, that wasn't my question. The question was about executive, executive session. It, that, that's, I yeah, mean, that, when, that is up get, to... When you got hired, it was under an executive right. session format. Yeah. I'm wondering if it has to be the same way when you talk about an no, extension. the answer is no. It can be if it, because it falls under a category which is, is, allowed, is to allowed to be held in executive session. Not everything is allowed to be discussed in executive session. Mm -hmm. Personnel and contracts is allowed to be discussed in executive session, but that doesn't mean that it has to be discussed in executive session. But I think only discussion can happen in executive session, but it has to be public. In either case, yes. So someone just made the motion that they want to go into executive session. Or make, or the, make motion the motion to extend the contract, the contract for two months. months. I just did that. <laughs> did you? I, well, just now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I'll second do that. We, okay, so we have a motion from Barry mm -hmm. to extend Sally's contract by two months, seconded by John. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 So be it. Any opposed? The ayes carry. Any opposed? Sorry, I heard a lot of ayes. I heard, of course. Um, okay, um, next is, oh, that's me, um, the municipal planning grant matching funds. So when we applied for the planning grant back in September, the EDC voted to provide 2200 in matching funds for the grant. The proposal went to the select board as 2500 but then it never got recorded in their minutes. So I am asking that um, we actually re-sort of formally <coughs> approve 2500 and part of the reason why I say in 2500 is that when the grant went in that Michael Brands did, for some reason he only put it in as 21600 so we're short by $130. $170. Um, $170, yes. But uh, the 2500 will then allow a little bit of extra money for outreach if we need it. Um, it's just an even number. So I'm just asking that the EDC approves that, formally approve that $2,500 again. We'll get it back on our books, and then we'll send it to the select board and get them to formally approve it, which this is I believe. Planning? Is that what no, this is, for the, this is for the municipal planning grant, the recreation grant that we're already working on. Okay. Um, I, I believe that it was voted on, but it didn't, it, get, into it, the, it it didn't get into the minutes. So It was voted on. So do, you, do you guys remember? Well, anyway. I forget what month it was. It was, about it was six September. Ago. It was September of 2018. Yeah, and this is when Sally applied for the municipal planning grant in the amount of twenty-two thousand dollars, and we had to commit to ten percent of it. Ten percent, yeah. If it was gotten, it has been gotten. We voted to, um, you know, approve the two thousand five hundred. So now. I'm asking for the 2500 yeah. then it covers that shortfall that we had because of the, the way the grant project yeah. had, the administrative error. So I would move that we approve the 2200 Well, do we have any discussion? Anyone? 2500 I would move that we approve $2,500 for the municipal planning grant matching funds. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. Motion carried. Um, okay, now election of officers. Now's the time when I say I am going to take a step back from being co-chair moving forward. I have a big life event that is unpredictable. And I think it's predictable. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's predictably going to happen. What's that? <laughs> Timing <laughs> may not be as predictable, but chances are the next couple of meetings I will not be um, quite as active. So Charlie is going to take over the chair position um, moving forward. I'm stepping back as co-chair, but I will continue on the board, and um, you all will vote about moving forward after that. If what that are we voting? Good for you. you need, do we you need, need to, to vote on? You need to vote for a vice chair. Okay. Do if Charlie's going to be chair, you either, you should either have co-chairs 
course, you'd have a chair and a vice chair. So you need to have somebody that's going to step in if the chair is not available. Oh, got it. I was denied. So what are we going to nominate people now? Is that it? Um, Does the select board have a vice chair? Yes. Hmm. I nominate John Spector as vice chair. Second. I second that nomination. I second and third that. Okay. John? All of us. We don't want it. Chair and vice. Do you want vice chair position? That's fine. I mean, I have time to. You know, I'm not. I don't have any. I don't have a similar life event. Okay. So, do we have a vote? John Spector is vice chair. Yes. All those yes. in favor say aye. 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 John Spector is vice chair. Thanks, John. Effective Thanks, win. John. Thank you. Effective immediately. Next meeting. Good night, Judy. Immediately. No, he's got to work in 21 hours. And. Don't you need to have a nomination well, for a chair? Technically. Technically, like, it's a first vice chair, right? And then we don't technically, yeah. Charlie was co chair, so he's still a ch chair. Yeah, he's chair. Yeah, he's chair. I think you should yeah. nominate him. Nominate who? Charlie for. for Let's make a formal. Okay. A, formal vote. a motion for. Chi I move. I move oh, that Charlie that be one. chair. <laughs> I'll select him. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The ayes have it. Charlie is the chair. Um, okay. New business. Barry, you had something that you wanted to bring up. I do. Um, so there's there's a lot of local attention uh, these days, locally and nationally, on short-term short-term rentals um, and, uh, and and the impacts. Uh, I think it speaks directly because there are elements of economic impact, economic development, and uh, community betterment. I think it speaks directly to um, EDC's mission. Um, with, there's both the um, uh, well, so the, the recent housing study, uh, planning commission task force, planning commission discussions, uh, trustee discussions, um, and, and in many cities around the country, they've all been, uh, they acknowledge some of the benefits of short-term rentals, uh, but they've also identified um, a number of adverse impacts um, to uh, housing stock. Uh, to the uh, school enrollment, health and safety, uh, community uh, uh, community engagement, community character, um, and uh, Woodstock. Uh, sadly, you might know the timing, but Woodstock was ahead of the curve. They they recognized that there were some. Well, we 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 wrote a short term. He Joe was on the planning commission then. We wrote a short term rental ordinance before Airbnb existed. Wow. That's right. So it was, I think it was about 2005 or 2004 that we wrote it. Right. So we, we understood that in this community that we, we, we addressed it. Yeah. I would point everyone toward the most recent issue of The New Yorker, yep. which right. holds a long Barcelona. feature on how Barcelona. Airbnb Mrs. is decimating. It was Mrs. Miller's house, as a matter of fact. <laughs> what? That spurred the whole thing. Oh yeah, it was um, a house on Gulf Ave. Yeah. Oh. All right. So, so it is, so there, it is regulation. There's some, um, you know, we've been seeing in the paper. There's some resistance to, to regulation and, and permitting, but um, we are we are partly because of it. You know, uh, all of commerce is regulated. Food uh, service is regulated. Lodging is regulated. Speed limits. So, you know, regulation. Um, our local business, my local business, is is heavily regulated. So we recognize the need for it. Um, and yep, there's some economic impacts, but uh, but we need those things. Um, despite the regulations, um, all of the um, uh, the groups that have looked at this also acknowledge that there's been no enforcement. It's essentially the only unregulated aspect of life in Woodstock. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the um, you know, and we've seen that, um, we know that the, the town planner is understaffed, uh, is uh, frustrated, you know, by being able to, to deal with this issue, but just doesn't have the, the bandwidth to do it. 
Um, we've heard from a, a local long-term uh, full-time resident that um, uh, she was told that the only way that she could uh, have some of the regulations enforced that impact her noise, garbage, whatever, what have you, parking, um, is to file a complaint that pits neighbor against neighbor, um, and we that that's wrong. You know, we we can't be doing that. Um, this seems like it's the low-hanging fruit and an area where EDC could have some impact. So um, had we been able to uh, make a, a proposal, grant proposal, um, I propose that, or would like to propose at a future meeting, um, that the EDC commit funds, a uh, round number was $30,000, to a short-term solution of a part-time uh, enforcement agent and expenses um, while the town and the village work toward a more permanent solution. So I've been part of that group looking at these alternatives and one of the ways that um, other towns have been doing enforcement is to use hostcompliance.com working with the town. So it might be that you could actually have a person for a few hours mm -hmm. working with somebody who's all who's very savvy and working with the internet. And they've been because they've been quoting a price of ten thousand a year to a do year. that. Um, so it's ten thousand for the that service or ten thousand to administrate the service? the service that they offer. So they offer many, many different services, and if you were to buy them all, of, which is um, in, for, in the enforcement side of it, and all the different aspects. So sending letters out from your letters, the town of Woodstock, so working as your admin, working as your investigator and your admin, and then from uh, talking with um, Michael, the part that we would have to fund is working out how to do any of the enforcement, because, um, in the state of Vermont. So they don't currently have a customer in Vermont. They have either, them either side of us in the states, yeah. and it's working for them, but we'd have to work out how it would work with Vermont laws if we wanted to do it. And there may be a suggestion, there was a suggestion last night that maybe we use this company, oh, so you made it. Uh, maybe we use this company to start doing some investigation about how big an issue it is and how well they could tackle it with the tools that they have. There's also, you know, in a similar vein, it's a, maybe a, a narrower uh, aspect of the issue, but there's, a, an expen there's an expensive database that's much less expensive than that. It's a, I think it's about $1,000 or $1,500 a year, which basically will identify the exact pattern of, of, it will basically say, here are the houses, here's how many days this house was available. And, you know, and, which I think is, a, is the first element of of enforcement, right. right? Because because our regulations, in effect, prevent certain patterns, or, or are designed to prevent certain patterns of that. Like if your mm -hmm. if your house is if if the advertisement is for whole house and it's available fifty one weeks a year, for the whole house, it's obvious that you're not, you know, con conforming with the regulation. Right. So well, I think there's so there are some any anyway, whether that specifically or Jill's idea yeah. or your idea. Those are all variants of the same proposal. But I I would just suggest that yeah. before yeah. we approve a thirty thousand dollar grant, we so you just, right. you just these. Things. I think there are a lot of I think there are a lot of tools. I was un un unaware of those. So okay. I think and I think what those tools seems like it focuses on is number of rentals, and there the other element is. Is it even a like a permittable uh, venue? So does it have off-street parking? Um, you know, has it complied with health and safety regulations? Um, but I think, well. So you're just looking for help with enforcement, not regulation. Well, no, they're exactly just uh, the EDC help short-term with some form of enforcement until you know, that's it's kind of played out. Do we, there's another point we need to make, which is on camera, that if we, uh, if the, the town, the village changes any regulations, mm -hmm. there's a very strong grandfathering clause. So it, if we were to change any regulations, they're not going to affect the people who already have permits. So you could enforce the regulations for those people and you could potentially make new regulations going forward for new permits. Mm -hmm. um, I would have a slightly different thought process here. Um, 
we, by doing this, we're getting in an enforcement role of an, an ordinance where it seems to me that if there is some proof that um, the misuse of, of housing for short-term rental um, uh, adversely affects our ability to attract people to the community or makes it so that um, there is not um, uh, reasonable rental opportunities for people to come into the community, which seems to be a real problem, then I would say, yeah, let's try and enforce it. But if, but if, it's, if it's just enforcing it because we have people who legitimately or illegitimately or whatever don't like short-term rentals, uh, and for other policy reasons that have n not to do with what we have to do with, then I'm not sure we would be getting, we should get well, into it. No, 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 Larry, the, let me address that. The, well, the, the housing study. So, yes, so I'm right. thinking that there Did should be a direct this. relationship yeah. shown, there not is. just theoretically. It has been but there, there, there is. There, okay. You know, I, in that vein, right, specifically in that vein, it's my understanding that a lot of quote unquote affordable housing has been eaten up by people who just purchase them specifically for Airbnbs or short term rentals. That, that's in my general, opinion, diminishes general. the availability of families to move into town, which goes directly against one of the credos that we have at the EDC, attracting new family to come that in. happening here? That's the question. So Our housing study does have some metrics about that. And I think that before we have, I think it's an unproductive conversation to keep having this conversation until all of us have read the housing study, if I'm honest. I think the reality is that the housing study would probably offer us um, I, I, I real direction. I, was, I did read the housing study, and I didn't see anything other than opinions that it could be. Uh, your opinion might well be uh, also based on the fact that on the ground in Woodstock. I just don't. Well, I didn't see. I haven't seen any. Maybe it did. Yeah, and I haven't. I didn't read the whole thing. I read half. So it. I've read the study in detail and can tell you what the study said, if you'd like to know. So. The housing study estimated that we have lost 50,000, uh, sorry, 50, 50 homes as a community to short-term rentals. And that at any time, at the time when he did the study, there were 75 homes that he could find in Woodstock, and many of those were whole houses and small houses, 2.4 bedrooms. Which is exactly what the dirt of and these homes would have been available for, for like year-round rental if they hadn't been used so, for short-term rental. That's really that you can't you can't argue that. But the one thing, because many people don't like doing long-term rentals, as we were hearing last night. But see, that's the sort so, of the underlying point. But what you can say is maybe those houses would be on the market. You yes. you don't know. We don't know any of these things. And one of Sally's points last night was maybe we need to do some more. Um, research and data finding to size the problem. What, what else could they be used for? If they, if they weren't short-term housing, they would either be unoccupied or long-term housing. They, would be sec they could be more second homeowner ha houses. Well, and, no. And be, so well, these are people be, that may be rented out for 10 weeks or 15 or 30 weeks or whatever, but they're not about to rent it out for the year. I you see. Know, you know, it's seasonal. Well, seasonal rent. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, so, okay. so there's regulation. Right now is six in the village and ten, so thirty is, you know, and, and I, I specifically tried to uh, focus this on enforcement of current regulations. Um, that discussion about whether it's appropriate here or not, you know, there there was people were the planning commission at the time worked hard and thoughtfully um, to create regulations that they thought were important for the town. There was a housing study that essentially in, in endorsed that, supported it. So uh, maybe there needs to be, and there will be, and there are ongoing discussions about uh, what the what the nature, what the complexion of short-term rentals are in the town. But but currently, there was there's there are regulations in place, and so um, and there has been a an express uh, need from the, the town planner for. In enforcement assistance with enforcement and that's that's all I'm suggesting and we try to do well and, and if anecdotal side note total sidebar but anecdotally the home that I purchased four years ago had been being used as a short-term rental the the sellers had had it on the market at a price far above what it, its assessed value which 
I believe was for plausible deniability. They kept renting it on Airbnb and VRBO, and it wasn't until I actually threatened to call the planning office and give, tell them <laughs> that we had, that they had received a legitimate offer for and the assessed value of the home and that they were turning down legitimate offers that they actually accepted an offer that we had made that was a totally reasonable price for a reasonable house right. and my house is of the exact sort of house that is not on often on the market in Woodstock so anecdotally speaking yeah. no not anecdotally speaking um, I think mm -hmm. this is a very interesting proposal but I don't think it's a proposal yet right no, well, we, it's, it wasn't, uh, it would have been had I not understood the, our, our, our guidelines. So I guess the question is, um, is this something that the, that, the ED, that the commission does want to consider at the May 13 meeting or, or a future meeting? It's part of the big picture we're going to look at, I think. I, I'm just curious where the select board lands on this and that's their responsibility to look at um, the, and I know that's been on the agenda, right? Many, many times. No, no it's not. No, it hasn't. Why wouldn't it be? The yeah. governing body that should be able to. Well, it's busy with roads and. No, it's, yeah. I mean, it's really a, a, a planning and zoning yeah, issue. I mean, in, in, at last night's meeting, we actually are in the process of changing the zoning regulations because we had all of our five acre and forestry zones, which is. 75 or 80 percent of the town did not require permits for short-term rentals so as of last night we have passed that change of ordinance which will require them to have a permit to have short-term rentals which is one reason why we've had so many unregulated ones because they weren't required to have a permit mm -hmm. so we're tightening things up but it is it becomes down to when writing a zoning regulation the select board really just approves what the planning commission proposes I think where it might come to the select board might be if the planning department asks for money, then that comes out of the budget that the select board operates. Um, so if it came from you and the planning commission together, that would make a lot of sense. I, the thing, I, I have a, I, 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 my instinct is I, that, that short-term rentals, while they do provide a benefit, also that, that, that the harm that they provide in, in certain volume and, is, is a problem for the town. That's just my instinct. Um, but I have a concern about the, e uh, in general, and this is a specific example, about the EDC funding things that most often towns would pay for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that in Woodstock, given the particular, I don't know whether the dynamic here is particularly strong or not, but I think we are at real risk as an EDC and as a town, actually. I think we're at risk of becoming a funding source for things that the towns normally pay for and that taxes sure. pay for. Yes. Yeah. And we have no business doing. Correct. Well, I, yeah, I mean, you can argue well, it, it, re it relates to economic development. I understand yeah. that connection, but I, I think that so. I, but but it also is the sort of thing. I mean, unquestionably, I think that towns typically pay for. I mean, you know, they pay right. for enfortment of their regulations. So you could be that. filling in potholes. Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that, yeah. the, to me, the, the, and I'm not trying to answer the question of whether we should spend this money or not, but I think the topic to be discussed on the 13th is not this specific grant. It's should, how, how bright a line do we want to draw with the town and saying that, you know, it's, I mean, the select board can tell us not to do this. The select board can tell us we want you to fill bottles. <laughs> I hope they don't do that. It would be terrible for the town, but they could do it. In the absence of that, I think we have to draw a, a relatively bright line. They can't. They can't. They, can't, they actually can't do that. But well, well, they can reappoint well, us. They I can, think uh, our job is, to, uh, no. is in, in essence, to help create revenue for the town. In the long run, if right. we're creating revenue for the town so we can do more, right. and there's a bigger pot for us. I, I, I don't agree with that principle. To, development might not be just creating revenue it's creating as a community no I know I get that but at the end of the day you need money to fix everything so if oh, you don't yes. have money to fix anything right. you know this engine here 
is supposed to help drive that. So we're very healthy financially as a town. So we can afford to, to do this. And then right. continue right. to keep it as a healthy community and be able to have all the things. So my, my, point was just, yeah. so you, my point was just that on the 13th, what I think we should be debating right, 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 is right. the principle. Yeah. Sure. And then we can apply the principle, whichever way we come out, to something like this. Right. So I think that, uh, you know, we, we could, I mean, anybody could, right? We could run some numbers to show that that, that to you know the 10 or the or the 20 or the 30 we could show direct economic benefit to offset that one second I agree that um, we should not be um, we shouldn't be supplanting what what the town or the village would normally fund um, and and I, I did specifically indicate that this would be a kind of short-term uh, kind of stop that because it's an immediate problem and the quickest way to address it might be through the EDC while the town. That's a good way to do it because we have to put our budgets together um, in January for voting in May to come in effect in July. So we have no money put aside for enforcement. Uh, the planning department has no money put aside for it. So if you asked the town to come up with 30,000, they might say, well, we might be able to do it, but it will be July 2020. But that's true well, of every single request. So it might be that one of the things that you, you regard is maybe some of the EDC money is used for experiments, pilots, Pilot before it goes into the town budget so that you can have more nimbleness than the town budget allows. It is a problem. Well, or even if not nimbleness, proven you can get taxpayers more readily behind mm -hmm. voting to increase taxes to do something mm -hmm. if it's been proven to have an effect. That's, you know, I Which think strikes me as something to be discussed in a high level. Right, right. Are we uh, there are we, arguments are, for doing it. As it's we're very adjusting. Slip, it's a slippery it's slope. A slippery slope. But, but, but it's worth having the debate. Well, right. I, I can see that there are reasonable points on both sides, but I, 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 my, only, my point was maybe more of a process point. Yeah. I, I really think that we should, that, that this specific proposal brings up this question of sure what is economic development yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. we should try to which makes a good topic to debate. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. so uh, let's table for now yeah. and we'll it'll yeah. come up on yeah. all we can do is 13. table it yeah. always yeah. start yeah, the discussion yeah. and, and, and yeah. I also think Larry's point though which I, I guess in, in a different way I'm agreeing with is having specific examples of what the economic impact would be mm -hmm. moves it towards or over the line. You know what I mean? It's a lot easier for us to say, well, this is something the town ought to be paying for, but if we spent X, we can pretty clearly expect somewhere between Y and Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes yeah. it more palatable for us to be doing it, even if it is something that the town would pay for. Right, and, and, uh, and part of the challenge of that is uh, how do you monetize community Cohesiveness and you know how do you monetize kids in schools, those kids, kids in people. schools? Well, no, well, that's, that's direct. Well, that's monetized. If, if one home, I mean, if if you were not able to live in that home, yeah, right. So that's fifteen thousand dollars a year <laughs> to the town of Woodstock. Plus, so, her volunteering and her husband's volunteering. I mean, plus income <laughs> taxes. Right. Plus. I don't think the baby's going to be earning much of this early year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> do we? Is this? Do we have a motion to, to adjourn? I'll adjourn. Oh, one, one more oh. a request. Um, and, and again, maybe it's just me. Could, could we have a proposed agenda like two weeks in advance that we all can look at and then have the, because the, having an agenda like three days in the, advance. The agenda is basically the same every time. But the issue is that there are often things that come up at the last minute. Like, for instance, we didn't really even discuss the fact that we would have to be discussing um, election of officers until this weekend. So I can't prepare one that far ahead. I'm just saying a proposed agenda. Maybe the, the well, two, this the, is the there are two people here that might have said, oh, maybe I should be on the agenda, well, for instance. This didn't occur to me until last night. Yeah. Exactly. So this, I mean, and so I, that's why I leave it until the last minute so that we have as, as, as sort of complete an agenda right. as possible. Otherwise, it's going to basically be the same thing every time. And there may, there may be a little bit difference. But, uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm only part-time, I'm doing a lot of other things, so it's really hard for me to get something that looked at before ahead of time. Got it. Okay, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved.
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.